dog yesterday, but we ran out of time. So I'm just gave her a quick power dry to um, fluff her, her hair up, and you know she's been playing in the grass. That also kind of helps me brush her, brush them out a little bit. But this, I'm doing these videos to um, let people see how good a particular dog they're interested in is because the number one complaint on Facebook is, oh my dog looks terrible, it was just at the groomer. Well, lots of times the groomers did the best they could because the dog was a nut on the table and that's like all you get. If your dog's being crazy, it's gonna get butchered. So I, I also wanted to show you guys, so this dog's hand's great on the table. Now, I wanna show you how to get to brush a dog out good, bring them. So you start, see how I'm holding it? Now this, I'm not even pressing at all, but I'm gradually going up the dog's leg and I'm making sure I get every square inch of the dog you can do it as you go down the dog's back. I'm getting every, also these power dryers, it might, I mean, I know they're, I don't know if they're like $300, $400, probably save you a small fortune, but if you could power dry your dog, it helps spread the hair apart and makes the brushing a lot easier. Anyway, so now, that's the proper way to start your brushing. Now I'm gonna take this comb and I'm gonna, well, her, her feet actually have dirt in them. But now, cause I saw a gal on Facebook that was using, I don't know, a really narrow comb and she said that her dog got shaved or was go going to get shaved at the suggestion of the groomer and then she brought it home and she was brushing through it. But, and you can, excuse me, comb, combing through it and you can comb through the top part of your dog's coat, but the dog can still be matted. So you need to do this, this part of the, cause I doubt if a dog groomer is going to say your dog needs to be shaved if it's, um, it, I mean, it's so much easier to give a dog a fancy cut than it is to shave it. Uh, we're talking at least 10 minutes saving on a, on a fancy cut. So I'm guessing that lady did have the top part of her dog combed out nice but not the not actually um down to the skin because I had a dog the other day one of my dogs actually and she seemed like she would probably be um see she's dirty right there she seemed like she would probably be an easy groom for me but once I started power drying her and seeing she was nice and looked like she didn't have any mats on her but she was matted underneath that top coat and so I ended up having to shave her which you know is fine because I like them shaved or fluffy she was good for it but I know this dog isn't matted because we just worked with her yesterday but you can see how I'm just see there's and then I'm just crawling up the And these are, sometimes I'll use, um, oh, I 
I don't even have it. Well, maybe in one of the next videos I'll get my dematting comb out. Sometimes I'll demat. Now, if your dog has a little mat under its armpit or wherever you put the harness or maybe behind its ears, you can put a little bit of baby powder on it and then just gently brush it like that. For some reason, baby powder makes it really easy to get um, mats out. You got to be careful with these because if you can, if you're pressing too hard, it's going to hurt the dog and possibly even give him carpet burn. So, you know, you don't have to press hard. But see, like I put my hand right here, just going right down her back. And then I'll. Okay, so now I'm going to use this, uh, I didn't want to spend $1,500 on a clipper vac, so I bought the hose and hooked it up to my, my clippers and then hooked the hose up to my shop vac. So this dog hasn't had that done to her. We'll see how she does for it. But my blades, when I, when I use my shop vac to hooked up to my clippers. It keeps the blade cool and then I can do several dogs before I need to get my blades sharpened. Otherwise, you know, plus it takes like a third the time. See how she... Okay. Ah, good girl. When you use your, when you use your clipper back, you want to put a longer comb on than you normally would. Like, so if you're usually using a two um, comb, use a, use a one comb. It's probably still, yeah, it's probably still going to be um, shorter than what you're used to. So, So I have a one comb on right now, on this dog. It's a little bit hard for me to comb, or do this while I'm trying to demonstrate. I'm just running off towards the floor on the side. I'm just running off. Not like, you know, everybody wants their dog to look fluffy still, but they do need to be shortened. You can see where I did it. This, this dog seems extremely good. And. She's one of the puppies that I have available right now. I think she's maybe 14 weeks old. Somebody gets this dog and takes it into the groomer. They're gonna, the groomer's gonna be able to do a very nice job on it because um, she's been worked with so much at such a young age. And people need to realize when they complain about how much the bath and brush was, that's the hardest part of the broom. So when I say that's a, so when I get underneath the neck, I just go up a little bit. So as I was saying, the bath and brush is the hardest part of the groom. Um, so, you know, it's kind of upsetting as a groomer to see people talking about 
how they're foolish because they just spent 60 bucks on a bath and brush. Well, you know, probably took the groomer an hour to give it to bath and brush. When I do these jobs, not every hair is going to be cut. If there's a hair out of place, get your scissors out and trim it. Or, you know, just leave it. <laughs> If you did this once a week, if you, you could probably keep up with it yourself. Or, I would say, depending on what kind of coat your dog has and how much rough housing it does, you're looking at every four weeks to six weeks. If you get your dog shaved, you could probably do it every two and a half months and just enjoy the length that it was growing out. When I go to do the I look it up like this. And I don't really like to, I just use the home to do the private because some dogs really react bad to um, having a metal touch their skin that's on a blade. So I just shorten it. I don't go all the way down to the and um, if you go again, it'll be a little bit shorter. You can brush. Hopefully the dog doesn't get lick nuts, but it probably won't. Okay. We'll keep on going. I'm not done. I was turning this thing off. I'll show you in another video what my daughter and I made. So, oh, I don't have my fancy scissors. Anyway, I'm going to brush this coat forward. Now, I didn't do it with Paul's because I know this dog's been playing outside. So she basically has been running her toenails and her, her um, puppy hair, her pad hair off. And I just brushed the hair forward, which I don't know if you saw that. Try to make a straight line. And this is a real, and then if you don't like the length, just very carefully trim around the, the butt. If your dog isn't being good, you don't want to make, have any accidents and hurt it. Good girl. So like right here. I haven't even taken the, <laughs> whatever, the tag off the scissors. I just ordered those from Chewy. I, I wanted to get um, some thinning shears. I ended up buying ones that had 42 teeth. And um, the reason I bought the thinning shears is because I was butchering the faces with the scissors. It looks, as my daughter pointed out to me. So I finally... After, I don't know, 30 years of grooming dogs, I finally bought a pair of thinning shears, and, and they're fantastic. 
on this chest when I'm shaving or whatever using the clippers. I just brush right down to the ground. I try not to do any of the legs and then when I come back to make check my work, I will just get any wild hairs. Then that makes it look like you don't have a uh, you know, two skinny little pole, two poles on a skinny little chest. It makes them look like they actually have a little bit of a chest. So Whoops, I'm sorry. And I, I mean, normally I would be walking around this um, grooming table and letting the dog stand in one place. It's upsetting for them to get spun around constantly every time you go to do something. So it's really easier on the dog to either try to do everything. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to... I'll, technically, you, you would have done the pads first, but I'm going to turn that clipper back on and do her pads and show you how to do that. Um, I hate to use a pair of scissors on pads because what if I accidentally cut her pad? You know, then that's going to ruin the whole haircut. And Don't let me forget that, PD. Okay. All right. I'm not a real big pad person, but they do sometimes get matted on their pads. But you have to be real careful when you go to groom those out because then that hurts if you've been digging with a 40 blade. Digging the. Okay, so now that I have thinning shears, I'll go ahead and use them. So brush the hair back and then and you know other groomers can tell me how to use these the right way I may not be I'm sure somebody will offer some suggestions after this video gets posted so and it, that makes it look really natural I just love that I mean, still, you know, misuse of the, right there, you can, but, anyway, so then I brush all the hair over to one side, and I, I grab the ear, and I'm just gonna, so she doesn't look like she has a, yeah, you're a good girl, very good. And then, and once again, I'm gonna move her. Good thing she's such a good girl. I'm gonna grab this ear and and maybe you don't like how I do my head. This is only only way I I I like it because when I sit and look at my doodle, it, this haircut kind of reminds me of how their hair naturally grows when they're. Uh, when they're a puppy before you've ever gone in with the scissors. So it would be much faster if I was using scissors, but you would be, re depending on how bad of a day I was having, you would be able to see some scissor marks, which, you know, I kind of butchered Frankie right before he left for his new home. The other thing I like about these is look at how unpointed they are. They're, you know, less likely to poke their eye out. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit less stressful for me. So, yeah, you're a good girl. I try, if, they, if they're like really not liking what I'm doing with their face, Try not to get in a fight with them about it because oh. then that's next time. They're going to be, oh, yeah, I remember. I hate this part of the groom. So they're going to be all ready to not like it. So try to leave. It's the same way with horses and kids. Try to leave things on a good note. So next time they'll say to themselves when you get started, geez, I was really good for this. I enjoy getting it done. So don't 
say, oh my God, you're such a jerk dog. Put it in the cage and then think that next time in two, two weeks or two months, it's gonna go great. They don't forget. <laughs> even, if it's, even if your dog is only good for half a second, stop, tell them they were good and be done with it. If your dog comes home and has a crappy haircut, don't react to it negatively. The dog can tell you're upset. And they're gonna be like, oh. well, last time I went to the groomer, my mom was so mad when she picked me up. They're not gonna like going to the groomer. And then, you know, it just is a kind of a, not, not a good, not good for anybody. I'll brush this. On my next video, I won't talk so much. But I was lucky. I got a good one right now. Let's see what my next. You want to make sure you don't accidentally get the air in with these thinning shears because it will literally slice that ear leather. So, but, yeah. And then, like I said, I'm, I'll just brush this down real quick. And I'm going to do my pads. I'm going to come around here. I'll try to. Maybe you can. Okay, good girl. Yeah, my, my daughter's getting the pickup. So that was a little bit upsetting. Not digging. And start in the center and go out. Do, a, do another one. Come around here, Katie. And try when you're doing it not to lift the dog in an unnatural way. You can actually hurt these legs. Yeah. So just lift it up. Lift it up the way it would normally want to go. Don't pull it way out here. Like I just did. <laughs> it's really, really hard to... And I don't use those devices to tie my dog up. Probably if you're doing it on this kind of table and the dog went to jump and it was tied up, the table would tip over and you wouldn't hang your dog. But your dog can learn to stand nicely on a table. It makes everybody's life a lot easier. Let me put this bandana on so we know who it is. And if you keep your ears plucked, um, they won't get matted. Um, and I can show you how to pluck ears on my next video. But the ear plucking is probably, you do that before you ever give them the bath because, you know, you don't want to do it before you groom because it'll dull your scissors. And, it, you know, it's going to make a mess. Okay. I'd say we did good. All right.